Hey, in this video, we are going to be covering responsive design. What responsive design means is you want your website to look great on any size device from the smallest of mobile devices all the way up to the largest of desktop screens. That's the concept of responsive design. Now we've got a website here that is not responsive. We kind of just built out a website as a part of our tutorial for new beginners course. Um, if you'd like to see this course and how we got to here, I'm going to put the link to the full course in the description. And I'm also going to put in the description, the link to the code as is now and the link to the code where we end up when we make this responsive. So you can see right now that if you were to view this on a small screen, we've got some stuff that starts breaking down. This content starts bleeding off the page, the menu gets weird, and this background starts looping. So at this point, we're going to want to add responsive rules. Uh, so when I'm approaching turning a website into a responsive website, there's really two things that I think about. Phase one is let's work with the content. Let's make sure the responsive navigation or the net, let's make sure the navigation looks good on mobile and desktop devices. Sometimes that means writing a completely new mobile navigation, or sometimes that means just adjusting your navigation to look good on mobile. Technically, you actually want to design mobile first these days because more people are probably going to hit your website statistically from a mobile device than a desktop device. We started desktop first in this because it's a little easier to learn that way, uh, but you should actually design mobile first and then make adjustments for desktop devices. Uh, so I'll start with the navigation, make sure that looks good on all devices. And then I'll go to my content blocks. Like this is a content block here. And you can see that we've got some help that, that this needs. We got to give this area some love. So that's what I'll do first content blocks, navigation, and then all my content blocks. And then I will work on images. I want to make sure that the images are optimized and we only load as big of an image as we really need to load. And then also our actual content images. So we deal with our background images, the ones that are made in CSS. And then we're going to want to deal with our images, our IMG tags. And we're going to want to make sure that those are sharp and the correct size, the most optimized size for every device that's going to be viewing it. Okay, that's a mouthful. Wow. Let's get into this. It's not actually as complicated as I may have just made it sound, but that's the approach. Start with your content, then move to your images and ta-da, you have a responsive website. So for our content, let's go ahead and start with the navigation. But before I do, I wanna introduce a new CSS thing to you, and that is the media query. You do a media query by doing at media, screen, and, uh, and then you open and close parens and open and close curly braces. If what's in here is true, we're going to add new CSS to the page. So let's add some new CSS real quick. Let's say our features block, which is this white background block here. Uh, gets a background of red. So nothing's going to happen because I have bad syntax here. But if what's in here is true, then this new CSS will get added to the page in the order I've declared it here. So let's say a max width of 400 pixels. If our screen is up to 400 pixels, so 400 pixels or below, then that new CSS gets added to the page and da 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 da, there you go. You see it on a small device. Um, so let's then go ahead and maybe also add another rule here. Let's copy and paste this and say, if your screen is up to 800 pixels, let's make this pink. And so, yay, now you can see that it's pink. If we go bigger, then it's white. And if we continue to shrink down, it's, oh no, it never turns red. Why doesn't it turn red? Because, well, these both match. Are we below 400 pixels? Yes, we are. Add this to the page. Are we below 800 pixels? Yes, we are. Add this to the page. And this overwrites this. So it's a simple fix. I've just defined my media queries in backwards order. I need to go like this. There we go. And now you can see that it's going to say, is it below 800? Yes, it is. Add pink. Is it below 400? Yes, it is. Add red. So now it's going to match 400 overwrites, and then 400 goes away, leaving pink, and then pink goes away, leaving white. So really, this brings us to that first point of media queries, is you want to make sure that you define them in the correct order. I'm going in a desktop down version right now, which is using max widths. I'm starting with everything, right? All these rules apply to everything. And then I'm saying, well, if you have something smaller than 800 pixels, let's kind of add some pink to that. And if you have something even smaller, let's add even more uh, edge case rules. So that's a desktop down approach. A mobile first approach uh, is going to be using min width and it's gonna go the opposite direction. So if you have a min width, these are gonna to apply to the smallest of devices on up. And then as a device gets bigger, we're gonna add more rules. And then as a device gets bigger, 
we're going to add even more rules. So that's kind of a mobile up approach. You can see that I'm going to start off pink and then red, and then it goes from there. So that's a mobile first approach. And that's how media queries work. So let's go ahead and get rid of these and actually write some media queries now to deal with our design. Now, kind of some old school ways of thinking in terms of CSS media queries is where are my breakpoints for mobile and where are my breakpoints for tablet? This is kind of when responsive design first became a thing, people would think of it this way. They think of, well, what's an average size mobile device? Let's call it there and let's make a breakpoint there and then go add all the mobile rules. And then where's an average size tablet device? Let's make a breakpoint there and then add all my media rules. But that's really not the proper way of thinking of it nowadays because there's any size of device out there imaginable that could view your page. You really need every size to look good. So instead of saying, where are my breakpoints for different devices, you need to say, where does my design start breaking down and start to warrant a different approach. Uh, so in this case, you can see my design starts breaking down somewhere around this like six to 800 pixel mark. That's when I lose my uh, content down here. That's when the menu starts wrapping around and doing weird stuff. So what you really want to ask is where does my design break down? Let's add some media queries at those points and start addressing issues. That's going to be way faster. And it's also the proper way to think about a website. So let's start with the navigation up here. The design breaks down around here. Let's add some media queries to fix this. I'm going to scroll up here to my header. And then after my header, I'm going to add a media query. Uh, and you can do several things. You can add completely big chunks of media query rules at the bottom of your CSS or you can add multiple small ones with each section. I'm, I think for the simplicity of this website, I'm gonna be able to go just fine by adding some responsive rules to the bottom of the header and then some responsive rules to the bottom of the features. Uh, that way they're easy to find and easy to track. So I'm just gonna go make a comment, uh, responsive rules. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a media query here, media screen and and then open and close, and then open and close. So let's find out where our breakpoint is here. An easy way to do this is to open developer tools by clicking view, developer, developer tools. And as soon as I do, when I resize my screen, yay, I get these like little pixel dimensions here. So let's find exactly where my design breaks down. You can see, do, 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 it's right around, up oh, there you go, 715 pixels. So at 715 pixels, I'm gonna add my first rule. I'm gonna close out those developer tools. I might not even need them there. So for a max width of 715 pixels, let's do something cool. Now we just need to figure out what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and shrink this down a little bit. I think what I'd like to do is actually make locations and contact up here for this full line of menu items and then drop this logo down below. Now there's a few different ways I could approach that. Let me go to my HTML. Um, some people will actually use JavaScript to remove this from the DOM and then re-add it down below. You could totally do that. Um, you could write a completely new menu UL. And so that would be this one. And so this one goes away on desktop and this one appears on mobile. That makes sense in a lot of situations, especially if you have, say, a mobile menu up here with a hamburger menu that slides out. Sometimes the DOM structure looks completely different. In this case, I want very similar DOM structure. I just want these two menu items up here. So I'm just going to hack it in and go like this. Then I'm going to go class equals mobile. And then I'm going to add a class equals desktop down there. So class mobile and then class equals desktop. And so I'm going to show these when I get bigger and I'm going to show these when I get smaller. That's pretty easy to do. So when I hit save, I now have duplicate content there. No problem at all. Let's just go over here and let's do header mobile uh, gets display none. So by default, my mobile things will just display none. And then when I get over here, then header mobile gets display inline block the way it should. And header display or header, let's close this. Header desktop gets display none. So when this kicks in, it's going to overwrite the two. And there we go. Those two are showing and those two below are gone. Hey, pretty cool. That's that's working well right there. Uh, let's go ahead and shrink this. Let's see. Nice. Everything is working. So you can see that those two go away. Boom. 
and then that one comes down. Excellent, this is working. My navigation's kind of solved with just those couple rules. Everything's looking good. Now this background image doesn't quite look right, um, but everything looks good as well. Let's go ahead and change this um, header height to be something more like 200. So there we go, that kind of shrinks down as well. So once you get to that break point, it shrinks down. The background image can use a little tweaking, but I'm gonna leave that for the next phase of this tutorial. Uh, so there we go, boom, boom, nice. My navigation's working good. Let's move on to this content block. Uh, we can go down here and add a responsive rule as well. Let's go add responsive rules. And let's get a media query going here for that same breakpoint. It looks like it's right around that 715 pixels as well. So I'm just gonna make the whole display kind of flip at 715 pixels. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this. Uh, I'm going to make each one of these display block. You can see that what we have right now is we've got our features and it's display flex. But if I did change this to display block, then it's not going to be a flex box display anymore. Each item is going to get its own row because they're all just going to be display block. Cool. That's all I have to do. So in here, uh, let's go features. And so now when I come over here, we're getting a flex box layout. And as soon as you go to there, we're getting a display block. That's pretty cool, but I'm not super in love with it. Um, and also you might not need these rules at all. Uh, and what I can do is I can turn these off. If you're actually smart with how you build your layouts, you might not need those responsive display changes. Um, I can just turn flex wrap on and these will automatically wrap around. So when this starts running out of space, it'll wrap down to its own line. So I'm just gonna go flex wrap, wrap. And without any media queries, I should be okay. Doop, there we go. You can see it actually looks nicer. It starts wrapping around to a two and one display. And if I get even smaller, well, now I get the one, one, one display. So this is kind of a lesson to point out that you might not need media queries if you're just better with your design layouts. Uh, if you can make your layouts be, by using Flexbox or CSS Grid in a little bit of a smarter way, then the content, each content block can kind of manage itself based on the space it has, and you don't really need media queries to handle that. About the only thing I wanna do here is I noticed here when I came down a little smaller, no, we're good, this is nice, I'm happy, okay. That's been very, very easy. So at this point, we've kind of dealt with the content blocks and you just take them a block at a time and figure out what you want to do. Do you want to change these? Do you want to turn them from circles to squares when you got a small screen? Do whatever you want. Um, the, the sky's the limit because you can add completely new chunks of CSS based on your screen size. So now let's talk about images. I'm actually not going to dive all the way into images into this tutorial because it's a pretty big conversation. But in short, you're gonna deal with images in two ways. You're gonna deal with the background images uh, and then you're gonna actually deal with the content images, the IMG tags. So the background images are a little bit more straightforward. You can use your responsive rules to load in completely different background images. You can have, lo you can have logo large, you can have logo medium, logo small, and load in different ones based on different screen sizes. Uh, and CSS is smart enough to load all the CSS and know which one image to go grab. So that's kind of how you deal with background images. Um, and you also want to maybe change the position of them. So here we have, you can see that as we hit that first break, and we kind of can't see the logo anymore. I kind of want this little oatmeal loaf to kind of go down a little bit. So let's make this background image. What do we got here? Header background image. You can see position is center. Let's come over here and go position. We can go X and Y. So right now this would be like zero X and zero Y. Uh, let's make the Y maybe something like 30 pixels. Whoops, sorry, background position. That's why nothing moved. Background position. There you go, so uh, 30 pixels is bad, we don't want that. Let's go negative 30 pixels. There you go, we're slowly kind of pulling it up. Negative 40 pixels. And at that point I can kind of start realizing, you know, I actually want this to be 250 pixels tall. Boom, that's starting to feel a little better. So let's make it negative 30 pixels, 250 pixels. It's a lot of tweaking that you have to do. And then as we get even smaller, I'm gonna want that to adjust even more because now my 250 pixel height doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna add yet another media query here. Let's say under 500 pixels, I want my height to be 200 now. So 
So there we go. I've solved the header height problem. Um, and I also want to bump this position down a little bit more at this point. So background position. And negative 10 pixels. Let's change it even more to zero. There we go. So I can kind of see the logo now. So here I'm at a height of 200 pixels. And my background position is zero, or technically negative zero, whatever that's all about. And then boom, I've bumped it to 250. And there I'm bumping it to the full 400. So now it's looking pretty good on each device. And realistically, users don't ever resize their browsers. Um, they're gonna load up at this size, or they're gonna load up at this size, or they're gonna load up at this size. They're just gonna see what they see when they load up. And so we've adjusted our background images. That's working pretty well. Uh, we could probably optimize and tell this to load in a different size of background image because right now it's loading in a background image that is this big. So that's not very optimized for mobile, especially if they're on a 3G connection. So we could actually tell the background image to be a completely different URL, you know, some image small. And so it's going to load in something else. That's kind of how you'd optimize those background images. Now let's talk about optimizing these actual content images, which is anything with an IMG tag. I'm not going to go into all the way to do this because it truly is its own conversation. But I will tell you that there's two ways that you deal with it. You deal with it with source set, which is SRC, SET, uh, a source set attribute. And the source set attribute is when you have the exact same image in the exact same proportions, but you just want to load larger or smaller versions of it. So if it's a four by six and it's the exact same photo, then source set is the approach that you want to use. Now, if you want to actually crop an image differently or maybe show it square at one size and rectangular at another, then you actually want to use the HTML5 picture tag. So that's when you're going to want to use the picture tag. Um, there's a lot of dialogue and a little bit of a learning curve on each one of these. So in the description, I'm going to put two really awesome articles that tell you when to use which. Uh, but again, source set, if the same picture with the same dimensions is getting loaded in, just larger or smaller. And then picture, if you're actually going to do something different, load a square image or a rectangle image, depending on the size of device. And that's how you're going to deal with responsive images. Responsive images are kind of an optimization upgrade. You don't have to fully know them as you're starting off. You'll just want to know them as you get better and better. So it's something for you to kind of add to your continuous learning set. So anyway, that's how you make a website responsive. You can see that we look pretty darn good at any size now. It's always going to work. We could continue to tweak all the little details and spend as much time as we want here, but I'm going to end the lesson now. I'm going to put the code online. You can play around with it and have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching.